Hey everybody, welcome to another segment of Meet My Horrible Friends. And this time I'm talking to Sarah Woodward, who I've known for like, I think 18 years, I was thinking about it. Um, because we met in Tucson, Arizona, when we were both working in television news. And do you remember like what it was like working together at that time? I, I remember how ridiculous it was because I anchored Saturday mornings and you were the editor. Oh yeah. I was the weekend editor. I was a hot mess. It, that was a completely different lifetime ago. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so I used to show up completely hungover or still intoxicated and just do the bare minimum that I had to do. So, yeah. And you took things very, very seriously. This was like your I, career. And I was just kind of like, I'm here. <laughs> you know, I just remember you coming in after going out because it was an early show. It was like six in the morning, I think, is when the show went on. But we had to get there like at four, three in the morning. And I just remember going back to the edit bay and you were sleeping underneath your desk. Yeah, that happened a lot. Or I was like blasting rave music with my edit bay door shut. <laughs> and I was like neurotic and like, oh my God, like writing the show and rewriting things. And I, I'm so glad I'm at it. I mean, news taught me a lot, but I'm so glad I'm out of it because I feel like that just did not help the parts of my personality that are already like high strung. I feel like it just sort of <laughs> brought it out more because it's such, it's such a crazy industry. But um, so yeah, we met there and then we've been friends ever since Sarah for everybody out there used to live in California now lives in Arkansas, but comes back and forth to Austin to work. And we'll get into that a little later, but I always have to start with, because you know, if you just look at my posters, you've seen my show. I'm an absolute lover of horror movies. You, however. <laughs> I hate them. <laughs> I hate them. I never want to watch them. They make me paranoid. They make me think there's things outside. I can't sleep. Yeah. Yeah. So have you always felt that way? Or was there a movie that you watched when you were younger? Or what was it? Do you remember like a horror movie that you tried to watch or the first one you saw? that that was what kind of made you say, that's it, I'm never going to watch these again, or I'm not into this? It was probably some deep-rooted childhood trauma. Like, I remember my mom watching The Exorcist, and I did not want to watch it. I was little, little, maybe less than 10 years old. And she made me watch it, and I just, like, hid my face in her skirt the whole time and cried, and she didn't turn it off. And we just watched it, and I had to listen to the bullshit, and I think I was traumatized since then. And uh, I'm the youngest of four siblings. My my oldest sister is seven years older than me. So she loves like th uh, thriller, horror movies, like paranormal stuff. So I grew up around all that too. So like, I've j I think I'd, I'm just traumatized from it, from my older siblings and my mom. And my dad used to watch uh, serial killer documentaries in the, in the 80s. And so I had to watch a lot of that. So like... Yeah, I think I'm just traumatized. I know because every time I want to watch a horror movie, no, you never want to watch it. But I think, did we not watch and you thought it was cheesy because it is like one of the Friday the 13th or something? And you're like, oh my God, this is ridiculous. Yes, yes. Because I haven't watched them since I was young. And so now as I watch them as an adult and you're laughing over there in the corner while we're watching movies, it, it changed it a little bit. But yeah, I still like, the goriness, it's, I don't know, I just, it's just not for me, but still. Friday the, Friday the 13th is super cheesy, though. I realize that now. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's, you know, like, those are my favorite, those are my favorite horror films from the 80s, the real, like, slasher, bad acting, you know, although Friday the 13th had really good special effects, but some of the movies in the 80s did not, but I love those, too. Um so what kind of films, if you had to choose, because I know you read and are you more of a reader than a movie watcher or you kind of do both? I do both. I like movies. I like uh, graphic novels too. So I think I'm, more of a, I'm a visual like, person. What would you say are like your kind of go-to movies if you had to choose something, not necessarily a genre, but just kind of what you enjoy watching? 
I like uh, sci-fi's a lot, but I also like really cheesy, campy movies. Like the cheesier, the better. Um, yeah, like the Barbie movie that just came out that was like over the top, cheesy and campy. So that that made like the little girl missing the heart. What? Huh? I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> I know it's huge right now and everybody's going to see it, but I still haven't seen it. And there was another movie that I still haven't seen, which shame on me for not watching it yet, because you've talked about it and it, for whatever reason, it just popped in my head is I heart Huckabees. It's one of my all time top 10 movies for sure. Yeah. And either people either love it and they understand it or they like, they don't get it at all and they hate it. So it's, there's no, I've never realized there's no in between with that movie. It's about an existential People having existential crises. Yeah. I feel like um, that movie would probably fall within my, me liking it because I love the Christopher Guest movies, like Best in Show, This is Spinal Tap. <laughs> those yeah. kind of, that humor. And I know it's not the same, but like, I usually love those kind of, and those are again, the type of movies that people either get it or they're like, what is this? Like, I don't yeah. get it. I don't understand yeah. it. Um but bring, thinking about that movie, though, did you ever see, because I love Lily Tomlin, as you do. Um, yeah, yeah. Did you ever see the the outtakes with her and the director, like, fighting and From cussing that movie? each other out? Yes. No, I need to look that up. I've never seen Okay, that. after this interview, her and the director, they're cool with each other, but... Oh my God, Sarah, you will die because this is the thing you live for. She's like cussing him out. He's cussing <laughs> her out. And she's like, oh, don't even look at me. Like she's so angry. You have to go watch it. And her and him, and he's throwing things. Like there's a scene where she's, it looks like she's in an office and yeah. the director's like cussing her out. He's like, God damn it. And he like throws stuff everywhere and storms <laughs> off. And then he comes back through the door and yells at her again and calls her oh names and she's just like we're gonna have to get a new director like she's just it's so it's so it's real you have to watch it because she's they've t interviewed her about it she's just look him and i are really cool like we love each other you know whatever but they're two creatives you know like high right. strong kind of creatives but it was so funny like they were like at each other like not just i mean they were like screaming at each other yeah, I love that stuff. The psychosis of people breaking down is like my favorite all time. Okay, well, you need to go look that up after <laughs> you're, you're done here. Yeah. But um, one of the things that I've always kind of, you know, loved about you or admired about you because it's very opposite from my personality is that you really are sort of a, what is it, like a, like a gypsy, like a free thinker, like you just you don't really subscribe to, and I don't to a point, but I mean, you really are sort of, you do your own thing. You work for yourself. You've kind of always been geared towards, you know, in your career and everything that you've done, not working necessarily for somebody, but being really collaborative and not having the normal like nine to five type job. Like you're really like, you're the type of person that will just get up in the middle of the night and go drive like eight hours somewhere just because <laughs> I'm not, you know how I am. I'm just like, what? Yeah. So have you always been like that? I mean, can you, I mean, even like growing up where you just kind of always free spirited that you just have lived your life like that always. Cause since I've known you, that's sort of been the Sarah that I've known. Of course you've evolved. We all have since being twenties and the early thirties, but I feel like that's always been a big part of who you are. Yeah, uh, it's spontaneity more than anything. I like spontaneity. I get distracted and bored a lot. I think I have like an ADD mind. So I constantly have to be changing. And if I'm in like a nine to five job, that's like death to me. Like if I have to do the same thing over and over and over every day, it just, it drains my soul. So yeah, like even when I was 18, like I decided to, I, I used to have a fanzine with my sister and and we used to like do reviews on local bands and whatnot. And as a joke, we tried to get Woodstock 99 media passes and they actually <laughs> gave them to us. And so like spontaneously, I was like, I'm going, I don't have any money, but I'm going. So I ended up taking a Greyhound bus with like $200 in my pocket and going to Woodstock 99 with media. Which was it this? Which, Which was, was a disaster. a disaster. Yes, it was great. Um, but yeah, so I've always been like that. I've always been very spontaneous and just, 
I have to have jobs that are willing to work with me in that way. That's why I do like, I do filmmaking. So like I'll be on set for maybe three to four months and then I'm gone for three to four months. So that really works for me um, just because of that personality trait that I have. Yeah, because you do a lot of back and forth. Like I said, you come to Austin, but then you'll go back to Arkansas, but then you'll go visit uh, your daughter who lives in California right now. Um, yeah. And yeah, so that talk about because I went recently to one of your your movies that you worked on. They had a big premiere here in Austin. Um, talk about like some of the films that you've worked on and what really what type of films interest you because I know the films that you've recently worked on are very um like there's a passion beyond just working on it for you like you connect with the material that you're actually you know you're interviewing these people you're putting it together but sometimes people just do that as a job they're like okay whatever I'm gonna edit it but you really kind of connect with a lot of the projects that you take on it's almost like you take on projects that you feel like I think that you would connect with right yeah, absolutely. I have to have an interest in it for sure. Uh, but lately I've been doing a lot of political stuff. Uh, it's kind of controversial and whatnot, but I get sent out to a lot of like rallies and protests and stuff like that. And the reason why I'm good at it is because I'm very calm and centered and I can be put into crowds, like people going crazy. Like I said earlier, the psychosis, the psychosis of people breaking down and doing and getting out of character and just like being outrageous in ways that they didn't even know they knew how to be. But I could be in that crowd and I could, I could keep my composure and I don't, I don't lose it like the crowd does. And I've had like cameras swapped out of my hands and whatnot, but it, it gets gnarly and I could be both on either side because in, in political stuff, there's like a big divide, right? Left versus right, conservative versus liberal. So I could hop back and forth because I I don't really have an agenda. I'm just trying to like figure out what people are fighting about and why are they getting so emotionally aroused. And so my filming style is I jump back and forth. And even in locations, like I have people who are really confused. They're like, what side are you on? And they want me to pick a side. I'm like, I'm not picking a side. I'm just here to document. So that's, that's kind of what I do. Um, but yeah, I, I don't want to get into like all the political stuff about it. No, 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 no. You don't have to do yeah. that. But <laughs> what I love about it though, is that you show me some of the footage that you've shot and you're right there. Definitely in what you do, there is such emotions running high on both sides. And it is interesting that because for me, that would just give me a lot of anxiety. Like I'd be like, Oh, these people, I can't, but you're just very calm and you know collected and yeah, uh, i've seen like photos of me from like the opposite end and i look i have a smirk on my face the whole time like people are screaming in my face threatening me and i'm just like smiling like hi <laughs> and the people don't know what to do with it and i uh, i don't know i find I it, it i get away with a lot yeah i find it fascinating what you do because and again not to go down the political rabbit hole but just where we are today in the world with the extremes, no matter yeah. what you believe in, there's such extremes that it is so crazy, like to see, like, you know, the stuff that you filmed and I've seen some of the behind the scenes and just, and I've heard them yelling at you and I've heard them like, not liking that you're interviewing the other side. And I just, it's just fascinating to me to see where we are <laughs> as a society right now with you can't be in the middle. You're either this or that. And if yeah. you have any other thoughts that don't match either side, both of them are attacking you. So I appreciate what you do and that you're able to be centered and to do the documentaries that you do, which are important to see another viewpoint other than just the ones that we get hammered with, yeah. you know, in the media and, and that, yes. and yeah. Go ahead. I said, oh, those fights are going to continue going on forever. Like if you go back in history and watch like mm -hmm. archival news, it's the same nonsense. It's just a different narrative in that moment. And it's always, they're always pushing us fighting against each other. And that's what gets the ratings. That's what gets the views. And it just becomes a form of entertainment over time. So yeah, I don't go with one side or the other. It's just like, it's, it's, 
it's like a, it's a bait and trap basically. Yeah. yeah. So you love living out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> I think so, I just like being away from people. <laughs> tell me about your love for people, Sarah. Like, how much oh, do you like people? God, I have, after, every time I go out to work for a few months, I have to come back and just, like, decompress and get away from everyone and not talk to anyone. Yeah. Whew. Like, show I know me the door. You, Take me to a party and I'm looking for the back door. <laughs> <laughs> but you're so good at being around people that you wouldn't know. Well, you know, I don't, I'm more of an introvert. Like my work and everything requires me to be like a talker, you know, for communication. Yeah, sake. Yeah. But other than that, you know, outside of even doing this in my spare time, which I like to do and outside of work, I'm, I'm like that too. I'm just not, I have no desire. Like the idea of going to a party, you know how I am. Cause you've gone to parties and you'll invite me. I'm like, I don't want to do that. Like, and you're just going cause you think it's hilarious to, you like to watch people and their ridiculousness. Yes. Right. I mean, Especially even you, at, even you at the premiere, you were like, just had like this mad dog face the whole time. People would talk to you. You'd roll your eyes at them and be like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, <laughs> you're such an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not, I'll tell you, like, it's because, like, the, I don't want to say this in a, whatever, the people at that premiere, there are a lot of the types of people that, the people involved <laughs> in the film were great. You're trying to okay? be PC. I'm trying to be politically correct. I don't need to be because it's my channel. But <laughs> what I'm saying is that, we all gel with certain types of people, right? Yeah. I have, I, I get nervous around people that are very like um, Hollywood or very uh, like posh. Yeah. Posh and um, almost maybe it's generalizing, but pretentious and just, and so I don't go to those types of things often. You know, I'm around like the horror world. And when I have, met horror people they're kind of different they're just kind of like down to earth wearing all black you know what i mean just we're not posh and put together and yeah. maybe part of it's my own insecurity because i don't i that's not who i am so it reminds me of i feel so different and so i always get really nervous and that nervousness comes out as me looking just like completely annoyed because i just don't i'm not good at um I'm not good at having a poker face. I'm not good at pretending anymore. Like I'm not good at, I go because like, I was happy to be there for you. I loved being there for you and seeing your dad and your stepmom. All of that is great, but I'm not good at just being that person. That's like, mm, yeah, <laughs> I, I used to be better at it when I was younger. And now I just, I mean, because you even pointed it out at one point, somebody asked me something and I just, responded very directly without thinking about it but i wasn't being rude i was just like oh like that was probably a little abrupt but i was ner i was too it was like overload so yeah. when i get in that mode it's just like i can't help it but yes i but i absolutely loved being at that premiere and seeing the film and you know seeing like the work that you've done on it um so yeah, I just think that's great. I would point people to where they could find your stuff on your own channels, but you're not really, are you on social? You're on, are you I'm on not TikTok? really on, no. Well, yeah, I have a TikTok, Cine Sarah. It's C-I-N-E-S-A-R-A-H. And I have a website, mm -hmm. com. You can see some of this stuff that I don't share on social media that I've worked on. And then my TikTok account is just, you know, fun little conspiracy theory stuff that is kind of mild because TikTok bans you if you get a little too too outrageous. Yeah. <laughs> so I was talking about you living in the middle of nowhere, but I used to always go visit you when you lived in Ojai. That's still California. kind of in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. But I love I really loved Ojai. Like so, yeah, I was so sad when I. we moved. Yeah. I was sad when we moved. Yeah I do miss Ventura. It. Ventura's I like Ventura. I think it was yeah. cool too. Small yeah. beach town. Yeah. So, um, you're currently, are you currently working on any films or what's kind of, I'm, the next I'm on a break right now. I do like gigs here and there, but nothing, nothing major to talk about. 
I am working on my own um, film right now. It's about it's about MMA and uh, emotional intelligence within masculine men. So I'm working on that. It's it's in pre-production production type air phase. Um, I'll have a trailer out for it soon, but you'll find all that information on cinestar.com for sure. And uh, you do um, jujitsu, right? Is yeah, it jiu -jitsu? I do jujitsu and kickboxing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's I re <laughs> remember when um, <laughs> you. Had, this was years ago. When yes, you I had, asked you to like film something so I could like see how I progressed, and all you did was zoom in on some dude's face the whole time. <laughs> I was like, "What is this shit?" <laughs> Talk about horrible friends. This guy right here. Because <laughs> I thought he was cute and he was at your jujitsu class. Yeah, and all you did was like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Yo. none, of, none of it was of I didn't use any of it. I wasn't even in the video. Maybe my foot or my arm. I it. can't believe I did that because I would not do that today. I don't know why I did that. Because <laughs> if you asked me to help you shoot something today, I would never like jeopardize. I don't know what I was thinking. How dare just, you take me here and make me sit here? <laughs> it kills me though, because I do remember just and you were like, what is this? <laughs> So pissed. <laughs> oh, you've and here's another thing like that's cool about you. You wrote a book several years ago. Oh right? yeah, yeah. You don't have to yeah, talk about that. Yeah, book. yeah. <laughs> Next. And, yeah, there's some things tied to that book that we can't really talk about. <laughs> Next chapter. Where are we going? Yeah. <laughs> we did not so, discuss this in our pre-interview. Uh <laughs> yeah, I know, right? What not to ask. Yeah. Um so where would you like to actually? I know we I talked earlier about how you'll be the type that'll just go travel wherever. Um, and I'm always like very uh like, I wish I was that type of person. I'm just not. I have to be not planned, but I can't just, I'm not spontaneous at all. Right. Um, but is there, and I've noticed I say I'm a lot because I've watched my last one. So sorry, everybody. But if there's somewhere that you wanted to travel that you haven't been, where is that and where would you go? Uh, the Pacific uh, Crest tr Trail, is that what it's called? Yeah, I want to do oh, that whole hike and the Appalachian Trail. I want to do that whole hike. But, like, I don't want to do it alone, and I can't find any suckers to go with me just yet. So that that that's, like, a bucket list goal is doing the, both those trails with someone. Um, yeah, uh, just adventures. And anywhere around the world, basically. I like world travel. Um, yeah, but I don't have a specific, like, spot where... Now I'm saying um because you said um a lot. Uh, <laughs> now that's all I want to say is um um um. But there there's no like specific spot that I have that I'm dreaming of right now. Yeah. Yeah. And when are you gonna come back to Austin? As I always ask. Uh, well, I actually just got a phone call for a gig, so maybe sooner than later. In sure. Austin or in Texas? Austin. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that'll be awesome. You need to come back. Mm -hmm. Will you be I in the will. same place? You can take me to all your new new locations that you like to go to. What was yeah. it? The Super Gay Store. And what was the other one? Oh, it's um, We Love Video. In yeah, Austin, that one. So it's all VHS. I did a little video. Clip. I'll send you. It's on YouTube. And then um, the other one is, yeah, it's... Uh, the little gay shop in Austin that has like all gay merchandise. And um, it, it was really cool to go there because I'd seen it on social media a lot, but I'd never been there. And it's just like literature and they have, you know, stickers and albums and 
pretty much like a touristy store, but it's all around gay issues, you know, LGBTQ plus. Right. right. Yeah. Cool. So it's really cool. You'll you'll like it when you come back. We should go there and then we'll go to the video store. And yeah. So in this interview, you should show me, you should show them the poster I made for you for your 45th birthday. Yes. I will take a picture of that and drop it over. Yeah, I could probably find the digital copy too. Oh, send me the digital copy. Yeah, and then uh, also, if actually, how long are these? Do you have enough content? Yeah, I it's twenty. Say, it's I a- could show you like it's real that cheesy, campy old film that I made that you did the the news reporter voiceover. With. I can add it to this if yeah. you send it. I can yeah. add it to this. Um, to this ten interview. minutes, or if you just want to show like a part, that's fine too. If you want to show it. Yeah, I'll add it's it to old. the end. Like, that's not my work current day, but, you know, whatever. It's fun. Tell me, well, what's the film called again? Uh, It's an older film that I did with absolutely no budget. And then also I did it with, like, teenagers. They were kind of in charge. So it's really fun and campy. But it's called The Power of Christ Compels You. And I'm in it. Dave's voice is in it. Yeah. Yeah. What's funny though in the movie is everybody's voice is dubbed with someone else's voice. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So what happened was we filmed it and then over the course of time that I was editing it, all of these kids like moved away. And uh so I couldn't get their their uh ADR, their voice recordings to because it we did really bad audio. And so I just hired people like off of Fiverr and I was like, Can you do ADR on this? <laughs> So even my voice isn't the same. Like everyone's voice is different. But no one, you can't, if you don't know our voices, you can't tell. Yeah. No, it was really good. I told yeah. you I liked it. Didn't it win like an award? I don't think that was- one won an award, but someone who actually went to one of the um, the premieres and the film festival said like the whole room was laughing hysterically. So that that's that's good. I like that. is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall... What? What's with the salt circle? It's for protection. From what? Your spoiled white kid in an upper middle class neighborhood. So white privileged. Don't make fun of my religious beliefs. There is a real war happening in this country. The war on marriage, the war on Christmas, the war on traditional family values, and your mother standing on the front line flaunting her abomination of a life. She's not an abomination. She's just a lipstick lesbian. And she's old and irrelevant. Stay right there. Do not come to this room without being cleansed. Oh my god, you cannot catch the gay. Better safe than sorry. Step away from the door. Spread your legs and hold out your hands. Now you may proceed.
We interrupt your regular programming for a breaking news report. We are getting multiple reports into our newsroom of strange activity in the sky. Many of you have told us that you are seeing bright flashes of light and a number of unidentified flying objects. We have multiple crews all over town and we are working to get you more information. Let's see what's in the we market are still today. To hear back from the sheriff's department at this time. Please keep it here Ugh, for the latest. Girl, we will you're continue to old. Bring you as we get new information. For now, we return you to regular programming. Honey, what's wrong with your face? <laughs> it looks like you have a penis in your mouth. <laughs> oh my god, this is hopeless. <sighs> it's only you and me, Ice Cream. Just you and me. Does it really work? Yes, of course it works. Where did you learn to create the protection circle? I watch a lot of Supernatural. Let's get down to business. I've led the two of you here into the circle because we need to save your eternal souls. Your DNA is tainted with the queer gene. And if we don't retaliate now, well, you're still young. <sighs> what? What will happen? I fear it'll be too late for your entire ancestry. You will turn gay. And your kids will turn gay. You won't get to see heaven or spend time with our Lord and Savior. Your entire lineage will be damned by a life of Satan, bathhouses, and pride parades. That doesn't sound so bad. No, it really doesn't. I like pride parades. Oh no. The gay gene has already taken hold. I think I'm okay with that. Do you want to live a life where your wardrobe pieces are plaid, white v-neck shirts, and crocs? Where cats chase dogs up trees and Superman flies backwards? Life will have no meaning and will cease to exist. We'll be pushed back into pre-mortal ooze and become extinct like the dinosaurs. Were the dinosaurs gay? I can't wear crocs. They don't have a thread count. Yes, the dinosaurs were gay. Why else would God annihilate them with a giant blazing meteor? Do you want to be responsible for the world blowing up? Do you want to go out like the gay dinosaurs? No, what do we have to do? What do you think of her eyebrows? Well, I like them. Did you know that 15% of the population has RH negative blood? Yeah. But do they have good eyebrows? It really bothers me when bitches don't take care of their eyebrows. What they do up here is a good indication of what they do down there. RH negative blood comes from the Nephilim. What is a Nephilim? The Nephilim are a giant alien race that came down from the heavens to Earth to enslave men and rape women, creating an alien human hybrid race. If they were smart, they would have raped the men. Do you really want to take a chance that your next girlfriend could have alien DNA stuck inside her? I don't care what's inside of her. Why do you think I do anal? Since when? I can't believe I ever dated you. I can't believe you didn't end up like Hasbian and Haish out in the middle of the woods, seeking the mothership as God herself. Are we done with this trip down memory lane? I have a personal selfie I need to take. Wait, don't go in yet. Why? We need to hold our hands and pray. Seriously? The plan won't work unless there's no chance we can catch the gay. The kids are outside praying. Like, church praying? No, they're like 12-step praying. Is that girl from across the street out there? There's something not right about that girl. Last time she came over, I said hello, and she made the sign of the cross, spat her holy water at me, and started reciting Psalms 23 like I was possessed. It's more likely that you're an alien abductee that's been taken since you were a child. What? No. God. You should probably be checked for implants because you're most likely tagged. The mothership will find you through that tiny computer chip in your implant. It will either be lodged in your nasal cavity or at the back of your neck. Or maybe it's in your ass from all that anal you've been doing.
What the hell are you doing? Looking for an implant. Just stay still. Oh my god, I don't have an implant. What are you doing? Shut up, demon. Get thee out, demon. The power of Christ compels you. Excuse me? That's not how you talk to an adult. No back talk, demon. By the power of Christ. Leave her body at once. This is ridiculous. I'm leaving. Move. You need to stay in one spot. Otherwise, the mothership cannot beam you up. I'm doing this so we don't become gay dinosaurs. I'm protecting our family. I have to get rid of the gay. It's for my own good. I just can't wear Crocs. I'm not possessed! The power of Christ compels you. Demon, leave her body at once! You guys have all lost your goddamn minds. I think it worked. Of course it did. We've located you. I have a mission for you. Oh my. What big eyebrows you have. That you were the one I was simply obsessed. That this was love by what a goddamn mess. The fire we fell, why did it end? We were so beautiful, something everybody wanted.